a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. <laughs> show brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark greeting cards. And here's our star, the lovable lady of stage and screen, Charlotte Greenwood. where Charlotte is getting a newspaper background for her next moving picture, and Willie Anderson, the city editor, well, he's getting gray. We find her, as per usual, on a long-distance phone talking to her manager in Hollywood. But, Roger, I am trying to get back to Hollywood, but I like it here, too. I like the brisk winter weather. It's invigorating. I get things done. I can hop out of bed, exercise, take a shower, and in ten minutes, I'm back in bed again. <laughs> uh-huh. And, Roger, tomorrow I'm going skiing. Don't be silly. I can take any ski slide around here they've got with one ski tied behind me. <laughs> what do you mean that's the best place for it? <laughs> uh, all right, I'll wrap up warm. But, Roger, I positively won't wear earmuffs. The last time I wore earmuffs, I had a terrible experience. A sailor asked me for a date, and I didn't hear him. <laughs> oh, Roger, Mr. Anderson's buzzing for me. I've got to go. I'll write real soon. Bye. Did you buzz, 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 Mr. Anson? Did you buzz? Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come in, Charlotte. Uh, well, you're looking wonderful this evening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this cold weather has done something for you. You're fairly glowing. Mm-hmm. Do you feel all right, Mr. Anderson? Uh, well, of course I do. You know, you have cheeks like apples, a complexion like peaches, lips like cherries. Gracious, with a dab of whipped cream, I'd look like a fruit salad. Yes. <laughs> uh, sit down, won't you? Don't no, take this chair. It's more comfortable. Oh, thank you. Charlotte, would you say our relations are unpleasant? Well, I've never met your relations, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Some of mine are a little unpleasant. <laughs> no, no, Charles. I mean, well, we're friends, aren't we? Oh, yes, indeed. Why? Well, I don't know. Some people say I'm gruff and ungracious, that I haven't the manners of an untamed baboon. Oh, that's absurd. Of course you have. Yes. <laughs> No, no, look, uh, 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 what I'm getting at, Charlotte, is that you and I being such good friends, I'm sure you wouldn't mind doing me a little favor, huh? Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Anderson. What? Well, it's this way. Uh, Mr. Birch, the owner of the paper, met a fellow upstate who wants to write novels. In fact, Mr. Birch brought back one of the fellow's manuscripts and asked me to look it over. Uh-huh. Well, that was last summer, and I couldn't read it then. Goodness, you've learned to read since last summer? It... <laughs> I mean, I didn't have time then. Look, Charlotte, the fellow's in my outer office right now. I'm going to tell him I think the manuscript is swell, but before we can get into a discussion, you remind me that I'm due to cover a fire. Mm -hmm. But a city editor doesn't cover fires. Well, he won't know that. He's just a big hick from the... Uh, oh, oh, look, there's no time for me to explain. Just remind me I've got to cover a fire. Uh, uh, come in! Uh, Mr. Anderson? That's right. Well... You, you never met me, but I'm the manuscript that Mr. Burt is. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I'm Mr. Burt. I'm Bob Malone. Oh, yes. Well, well, well. I'm mighty glad to meet you, Mr. Malone. Uh, this is Charlotte Greenwood. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Greenwood? <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't Mrs. Greenwood. It's Miss Greenwood. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I thought that famous novelists were old men with long beards. Well, I'm just getting started. Oh. Well, how did you like my mystery, The Red Elephant, Mr. Mi Mr. Anderson? Huh? Oh, oh, swell. Yes, well, fire, fire. Yes, yes, it must be consuming. Yes. <laughs> uh, red Elephant, what's that? The, well, The Red Elephant is a carving, see? An elephant carved from a single great ruby. Oh, yes, yes, a ruby, a great flaming ruby. Flaming. Fire. Get the fire, fire. 
Well, what's it about, Mr. Malone? Well, it, it's a, a mystery story. But I, I'm not going to tell you how it ends. Oh, yes, sir. It had me burning with curiosity. Fire, fire. Are you chilly, Mr. Anderson? Oh. <laughs> you know, I've been two years working on it. That night after my regular job. It's just got to be public. Oh, I'm sure it will be, and you'll be proud of yourself. Well, I'm not thinking so much of myself, but Millie, she's my wife. She's got so much faith in it, and... We sure could use the money, too. I mean, with a baby on the way. <clears throat> well, you know how it is. Well, I tell you, Mr. Anderson, I've just got an idea. You know, Mr. Drake over at the Bon Ton department store, he's head of the book department, and he's just the man to give Mr. Malone advice. No, no, i got to go to a fire. Oh, 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 well, thank you, Charlotte. Yes, that's great. I'll put the manuscript here in a big envelope, address it to Mr. Drake. No, I'll wait, finish. I'll take Mr. Malone over there and introduce him to Mr. Drake. You know, oh. the store is just across the street. Well, that's better yet. Fine, here's the envelope. And besides, I'd like to get some advice from Mr. Drake myself. You know, someday I'm going to write a book entitled The Romance of Charlotte Greenwood. Yes, well, I'd like to know how that's going to end. <laughs> I'd like to know how it's going to begin. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Malone. You can tell me the rest of the story on the way over. But, Miss Greenwood, why don't we go to the front door of the store? What, and push through the, that crowd of Christmas shoppers? Oh. Now, here we are at the employee's entrance. But this is a storeroom or something. I think we better go around to the front. Now, everything is going to be all right now. There must be a door leading out of here. Oh, the lights weren't so dim. Oh, oh, gosh, I've knocked over one of those crates. Gee, okay, Miss Greenwood, I wish we hadn't come here. Okay, you uh, Wish for the sailor. Oh, for goodness sake, an OPA official. <laughs> Don't be funny. I'm a store detective. Detective? Well, we came here to find a friend of mine, a Mr. Drake. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you break open some of the other crates? He might be in one of them. But listen, mister, I can explain. Oh, sure. I bet you've got a story all fixed up. Oh, he certainly has. He has a wonderful story. He's been two years working on it. Uh, she's talking about a story I wrote called The Red Elephant. You see, we just came here. Never mind. You can explain that later. You're coming along with me. Yeah, but, but why? Because I have a hunch you might be able to throw some light on certain things around here. Me? For instance, you might be able to tell me what happened to that last batch of stockings. Well, I can tell what happened to them. Just what I suspected. Okay, what? Every single pair got a run in them. Now, listen, you. There's a few more things that you'll tell Well, if you're going to keep on talking, I might just as well sit down. Oh, I do wish people wouldn't leave gopher traps around here. (laughs) You'll come on with me, the both of you. You'll get yours. Well... What are you going to do with us? You're going to have a new experience. You're in for a pinch. New experience? Say, what do you think I just had? One reason we all love Christmas is because it has always been a get-together day. A day for reunions with our families and friends. But this year, the war and travel restrictions will separate millions of us from those we love. And yet we can still visit those dear ones by sending a thoughtful Christmas card. There are scores of Hallmark Christmas cards designed to suit everyone on your list. Fine, distinctive cards for friends, for sweethearts, and for each member of the family. Clever, humorous cards. Gay little cutout cards for the children. And an entire series of lovely religious cards reflecting the deep spiritual significance of Christmas. So... Go to your Hallmark dealers this week while his selection is still complete. You'll find Hallmark Christmas cards that say just what you'd like to say the way you'd like to say it. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now Charles Hathaway, his orchestra, and the Hallmark chorus, and I'm always chasing rainbows. Some fellas look and find the sunshine. 
Anton department store to see a Mr. Drake, hoping to interest Mr. Drake in the story that Malone's written. Only she made the mistake of entering by a rear door, and now she and Malone are in the hands of a private detective. Is this the way to Mr. Drake's office? I'm not taking you to Mr. Drake. You're going to see the president. Don't be silly. He's busy in Washington. The president of the store, Mr. Jenkins. If you'll only just listen, I could... You can talk to Mr. Jenkins. Yes, come in. Oh, good evening, Mr. Finn. Why, uh, what's all this? Oh, we hate to be bothering an important man like you, Mr. Jenkins, and we wouldn't if it hadn't been for this gentleman here. I'm looking for a friend of mine. Just a second. If you're going to talk, stick to the subject. What, just to talk? I don't need a subject. (laughs) I found these two in a storeroom opening a crate. Well, well, dear me. What's your name, young lady? Greenwood. And you, young man? Uh, I'm Malone. Oh, then you, young lady, aren't with him. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yes, of course I'm with him. But how could you be with him when he says he's alone? Oh, he didn't say I'm alone. Then what did he say? He said I'm Malone. I I said, you see, I mean, I mean, even if she is with me, I'm alone. And now that I know her better, I think you got something there. (laughs) Mrs. Jenkins, are you going to let your hired help talk to me that way? I'm not any help. You don't need to tell me. No, no, no. I'm from a private detective agency. Now, please, we mustn't lose our tempers, must we? <laughs> Besides, Mr. Finn, your profession inclines you to be, uh, well, overly suspicious. Well, this isn't a matter of suspicion. I caught them in the act. Now, wait, please, wait. Let the young man here have a word. Thank you. Say, uh, how did you get into the storeroom, and just who are you? Uh, through the back entrance. You see, the... Yes, the employees. Employees? Uh, 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 we were back there because, you see, well, I, I have a story. A story? Oh, well, now, why didn't you say so in the first place, you rascal? <laughs> oh, Finn, they were in the storeroom because this young man has a story to whisper in this dreamer's ear. He has? Oh, yes, the old, old story. But it isn't an old story, is it? No, I suppose not to you youngsters. It's brand new, I suppose. Uh, when you called you, you know what happened. Sure, I always get the wrong number. I don't know about this. To me, it looks like plain robbery. Robbery? Oh, good heavens. You don't honestly believe that I'd steal. There's enough evidence to make a court believe it. You could go up for two years. Two years? Oh, my goodness. Oh, come now, Mr. Finn. Don't you recognize romance when you see it? Romance? Why, of course. These are simply two employees who wanted to be alone. So naturally... Employees? But we're not... Never mind, never mind. You're so understanding, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, now that's all right. It's all right. I was young once myself. Now, uh, why don't you two kids get back to your words? <laughs> kids? <laughs> yes, sir. We kids will go right back. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so sure they're employees, Mr. Jenkins. I'd like to check this with my partner, Bill Hattie. Uh, very well, Mr. Finn. Oh, think of that, Finn and Hattie. This is a fine kettle of fish. (laughs) Come on, Mr. Malone. We'll get back on the job. Come on. But, gee, I don't know anything about clerking in a store. I only said that to get away from that detective. We're going to find Mr. Drake. Only we didn't get away from the detective. He's standing over there watching us. Oh, gosh, he is. Young lady, young lady, will you please wait on me? Why, certainly, madam. I am looking for a suitable Christmas present for my uncle. Something like a nice necktie? No, a tie wouldn't do him any good. He has a beard. Uh-huh. Well, how about a fancy vest? No, he has a very long beard. Oh, yes. Well, how about a pair of bedroom slippers? No, no, I don't think that would do either. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Miss Greenwood, he's still watching us. Oh, just a second, young lady. I've been reading about that new fabric made out of milk. Made out of milk? Yes. It's the latest thing in dresses. Uh, Certainly an up-to-date store like this should have one. Oh, yes, we had some, but they all curdled. (laughs) You haven't anything in milk fabric dresses at all? No, madam, nothing but men's sportswear. Jerseys and pasteurized pants. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you again. Good evening. Good evening. Greenwood is still watching. Oh, young lady, young lady, while I'm here, I'd like to look at some hats. Uh, have you something that would suit me? Well, now, let me see, madam. You have a great deal of embonpoint. What you need is a stout size, a plump hat. A plump hat? Yes. Uh, something like that green one? Oh, that isn't green. That's our very latest shade, mildew. <laughs> well, I don't believe I care for it. Well, of course, if you'd like something a little daring, here is our B-29 model. B-29? Yes, it makes you look as if you're going to hop off any minute. <laughs> now, just try it on. 
No, 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 no. The two eagles go in front. No, no, I don't care for the eagles. Well, we could give you the same hat with homing pigeons, and then if you left it anywhere, it would fly home. <laughs> well, it might be all right, but it doesn't go with my hair. Well, if you like the hat, madam, don't let your hair stand in the way. You can let that go back to its natural color. <laughs> I beg your pardon. This is the natural color. Now, if you'll stand aside from the mirror, I'll put this hat on. Oh, no, madam, not that one. Oh, that isn't for you at all. Oh, on you, that is atrocious. It's simply terrible. <laughs> Young woman, this is my own hat. <laughs> I'm going to report to manager for a week. We better go. Oh, oh, you both of you. No. What seems to be the trouble now? Do you permit your customers to be insulted by clerks? I'm going to tell the truth. I'm not a clerk. And I'm not either. No, we came here to see Mr. Drake about the manuscript of my novel. <laughs> Why, Miss Greenwood, I've lost it. Okay, that does it. That does it. With the evidence I've got against you, you're going to jail for two long years. Oh, then I can send out my laundry. Your laundry? <laughs> yes, if I send it out now, we'll both get back at the same time. <laughs> Charlotte, it looks as if things are getting worse and worse for you and Mr. Malone. Oh, Wendell, it's just all a game of let's pretend. Say, you know, that comes pretty close to the name of your song for today. Pretend? Oh, that's right at that. See, friend, Charlotte's going to sing, I'm Making Believe. I'm Making Believe. Chances are you take special pains to find the card you'll be proud to send. Well, there's one easy way to be sure that your card is the very finest. Just look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. Like the word sterling on silver, the words, a Hallmark card, on the back of the card you send are your assurance of quality. Quality well known to discriminating people for more than 30 years. So when you're looking for a card to say just what you want to say in the way you want to say it, a card that lets your friends know you cared enough to send the very best, look for that Hallmark imprint on the back. Yes, don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Now to resume our story. After
After being suspected of breaking into a store and posing as clerk to get out the predicament, Charlotte and young Mr. Malone only landed another one. We find them now in an ante room adjoining the police court. Cheer up, Mr. Malone. I phoned Mr. Anderson and he was straightening everything all out. He well, my wife thinks. I come to town to do something about my novel, and what happened? We lose the manuscript and I land in jail. I live my life under a dark cloud. Now, please, Mr. Malone, remember everywhere some rain is due to fall. Except in California, there it's just you. <laughs> Charlotte! Oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. Oh, you're right on time. Charlotte, this is terrible. Why, do you know you're accused of a jewel theft? Oh, theft. This court will give you a stiff sentence. Yes, if they do, I'll go right upstairs. Well, upstairs for what? To appeal to a higher court. Mr. Anderson, are they really going to send us up? Well, I don't know, son, but I can help you if anybody can. I'm a big man. So we'll go in and see Judge Holbrook. Come on. Oh, well, that's fine, Judge. Then we're free. Just a minute. Uh, it's a little formality to go through, that's all. Uh, Robert Maloney, be guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Eh? I plead, not guilty. Uh, can I pick it word? And uh, you, Miss Greenwood, guilty or not guilty? Well, now, Judge, that seems to me a very personal question. Uh, no, no, God. Are you guilty or not guilty? And now, just a second, Mr. Anderson. I'm the one who's occupying these bench. You know, Judge, I used to have a cousin who occupied the bench. He was on the bench for years. Oh, yes, he was a substitute on the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, will you keep quiet, please? Oh, yes, Your Honor. I never had these... Yes, let me see. Where was he? <laughs> uh, oh, yes, uh, you were saying, young lady. Oh, it's all very simple, Your Honor. You know, we went over to the department store to see about the red elephant. Now, real elephant, that's a ruby. You see, Your Honor. Honor. Oh, and hey, hey, wait a second here. You stole a jewel? No, no, no. That's simply a part of his story. He's trying to sell it. It's again the law to sell stolen jewels. Where did this jewel come from? It's from South America on the Amazon. Yes. You see, it was stolen from an explorer from the pocket of his pajamas. Your Honor, sir, I call it. Who? Oh, who? Uh, 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 <laughs> Young man. Young man, uh, did you say his grandma's? Not grandma's, pajamas. He had his pajamas on. I said on the Amazon. Yes, on the Amazon he had his grandma's pajamas on. <laughs> uh, and uh, this young man stole the jewels from his grandma's pajamas. Don't! Your Honor, stop that hollering. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Pajamas on at all. They were in the closet. And anyhow, that hasn't anything to do with it. Of course it has. Hasn't it? The man stooped the pick in pockets. He eh? didn't stoop. No, he didn't have to. The pajamas were hanging on a nail. <laughs> oh, I see the point. Oh. Yes. Yeah, but... <laughs> but man, look here just a minute. This is terrible. But it gets better in the next chapter. Your Honor. Well, you... I stop confusing the issue as if... Oh, what did you say? Uh, I said that it gets better as you go along, and that's where the shooting starts. Shooting? There was shooting? Oh, you're darn shooting there was shooting. Oh. oh, the explorer drew out his pistol and fired, yes. but luckily the bullet went right, right through the pajama jacket. Luckily? What do you mean, luckily? Well, Judge, if you think what would happen is he was wearing his pajamas. Now, this is sheer nonsense. Oh, quiet. If he had what? If he had his pajamas no, on. No, don't start that again. Your Honor, this is only a story if you'll just let me explain. Eh? I say if you'll only What are you trying me... to do? I'm trying to plead for clemency. Well, let clemency plead for himself. <laughs> so in jewel shooting, I'm going to lock all of you up, including clemency. Oh, good evening, Judge. Hey. Oh, here you are, Mr. Anderson. Well, Dre. Yes, I, I phoned your office and they told me that oh, you were... Oh, why, Mr. Dre. Well, Miss Greenwood. Well, Mr. Malone, this is Mr. Drake of the Bon Time store. This is the man we've been looking for. Hey, Mr. Drake, this pair are experienced criminals. They're not experienced. Eh? I mean, they're... Oh, I don't know what you're all talking about, but one of the clerks at the store found this envelope from the post dispatch. That's my manuscript. The manuscript of my novel, The Red Elephant. You see, Mr. Malone, I knew it would turn out all right. Your manuscript? Hey, this is a swell story. I'm certain I could interest the publisher in it. Just a minute. What about the jewel theft? Oh, simply a mistake. Nothing to it. Oh, darn it. Wasting my time. Concha. What? Why don't somebody tell me these things? Thank you, Miss. Come on. Well, uh, uh, you, you see, Judge, uh, Mr. Jenkins says the whole thing was just a romance. Romance? 
too. <laughs> kind of the moment I saw you, young lady, that you'd know all the answers. Oh, sure, I know all the answers, Your Honor. The trouble is nobody ever asked me the questions. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can get together. Yeah, now, look, uh, come on, come on. You can be thankful that I had enough influence to get you out of this scrape. Come on, now, let's get away from this old coup. Yes, just the second Anderson. You're still your content. Well, thank you, Your Honor, for do, do, do content me. Yes, you. And unless we pay show some profit, that'll be ten days or ten dollars. Oh, Mr. Anderson, take the ten dollars. You certainly earned it. No, I <laughs> Greenwood will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, I want to remind you again, the next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying word, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A Hallmark card. Those three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now, Charlotte Greenwood. Friends, with part of today's story taking place in a store, it set me to thinking. Nowadays, with rationing and shortages and the crowd, shopping is sometimes difficult. Yet, while you and I are in the store for only a few minutes, the people who wait on us are there facing those same conditions all day. And nine times out of ten, you'll find them polite and helpful and smiling. I'd like to pay a little tribute to those people and drop the suggestion that it might help a lot if we remembered to smile, too. And now until next Sunday, at the very same time, this is Charlotte Greenwood saying, So long, friends, until we meet again. So long, neighbor, till next Sunday, I'm Los Angeles.